Pastor Jim is on vacation this week. Um, before I get started, I'd like to bring you up to date on a few things that you may or may not know about. One is uh, Phil Pace is in Upper Chesapeake. Please pray for Phil. He went there yesterday um, and needs your prayers. Also, Dr. Alan Carter from Conowingo went to Hartford Memorial, and then he was transported to university yesterday. So please pray for him and recovery of both of these. Also, if you have not heard, Grady Bedwell, who we've been praying for for a long, long time, went home to be the Lord this week. And his service will be on Wednesday at 2 o'clock. It's going to be a graveside service at Angel Hill Cemetery in Habit of Grace. Veronica Nichols, many know Veronica. She's going to have heart catheterization tomorrow in Virginia. So please pray for her. Also, Mike Waller, who we have a procedure tomorrow at Sinai. I do want to announce his anniversary, well, one anniversary, Wayne and Andrea Brown, 33 years on the 29th. And also, we have three birthdays for people over 90 years old. Rosemary Stotler, 94 on the 16th. Ralph Walls, 94 on, to, uh, on the 20th. And also, Gil Gentry, 92 on the Tuesday. Gil is here, I know. And please continue to pray for those recovering. Um, Sue Ward, she will be going back to doctors on Tuesday. Pray for positive biopsy results for her. So keep that in your prayer. And also, Sandy Miller had back surgery, and she's recovering. And also, please continue to pray for Bob Gray. Um, talk to him this week, and um, he appreciates your prayers. He thanks you for your prayers. And, but we need to continue to pray for him and his healing. The title I've chosen today might seem a little strange. It's called, Do You Know God or Do You Know God? And the first no is K-N-O-W. The second no is N-O. And what I mean by that is, do you really know God or do you know just about God? There's a difference. And do you say no to God? If you really know him as Lord and Savior, do you say no to him or do you say yes to him and his commands? So I also want to remind you that, you know, I saw these young children here today playing his bells and singing. And I don't know if Lindsay remembers, but Lindsay, I was teaching fourth grade and she was in that class. And I, and I look at these girls, these young ladies and, and gentlemen, and I think about them, and they are our future. We've lost a lot of senior members recently. I think we're up to number seven in the last several weeks. And um, I had Richard Young's service yesterday. Richard, Tim, and Vernon used to sit over in this area. Um, but Richard went home to be the Lord and um, had his service. And Audrey Hawks, we had her service on Monday. And there will be a um, memorial service for her later on, which we'll give you information about when we get it. So, and then, like I said, Grady Bedwell on Wednesday. So, you know, as our seniors are going home to be the Lord, and I'm glad to say that they went home to be the Lord, um, we need people to replace them. And these young children are the beginning of that replacement. You are too. All of you in here are their replacements too. I know some of you, maybe I shouldn't say this, but some of you are um, up there in age too, but so am I. But uh, we need to replace people we need to take care of God's business the best that we can. So anyway, so like I said, do you know God or do you know God? And Greg Laurie said, all roads lead to God one day. All of us, believers or atheists, will stand before God one day. And there's a little cartoon character in here, if they can um, bring it up. Uh, Submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. I picked this character because you may not know, but um, I collect frogs for many different reasons, but mostly because frog stands for F-R-O-G, fully rely on God. And so this little guy here is here reminding us to resist the devil. So remember, the devil would do anything he can to influence us and say no and to disobey God. Many of you might remember Paul Harvey. And again, I'm 
speaking to people that may, might be a little bit up there in age, but not too much. Um, but again, I am too. I'll keep reminding myself of that. But anyway, Paul Harvey always had a piece on radio, or sometimes TV, and he, it was called The Rest of the Story. And he would write something, and then at the end, he said, now you know the rest of the story. Well, back in 1965, that's 57 years ago, he wrote one of these. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm just going to read part of it. It says, if I were the devil. If I were the devil, if I were the prince of darkness, I'd do whatever is necessary to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers with, with the wisdom of a serpent. I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve, do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would confine that, that's, that what's bad is good and what good, what's good is square. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects but neglect to discipline emotions. Just to let these run wild until, before you know it, you have to have drug-sniffing sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Remember, this was written in 1965. Within the decade, I'd have prisons overflowing. Soon, I would evict guide from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who want until I've killed the incentive of the ambitious. And what do you bet I could get the whole state, whole state to promote gambling as a way to get rich? Think about that. Again, that was written in 1965. How true a lot of those things have come. Remember, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you receive a gift or gifts from God. These gifts are given to us to be used for his service, in Romans 12, talk, it talks about some of these gifts. Prophecy, service, teaching, leading, giving, mercy. And in 1 Corinthians 12, adds healing and administration. We also remind it that the church is one body with different parts. But guess what? We need your part. If your part is not part of this body of believers, we are incomplete. So we need your part to complete the body. You might be that missing link between a ministry reaching people and not reaching people. So think about that. You are part of that. We need your part. So my question to you today is, what will God say to you when you stand before him? And again, all of us will stand before him one day. Will he say, as in Romans 12:12, 12, 12, well done, good and faithful servant? Or in Matthew 7, I never knew you. What a sad and scary phrase, I never knew you. Remember, if you hear those words, it's too late to do something about it. We're going to be reading from Matthew 7, starting in verse 15 um, to verse 23. I do not have what page it is on your pew Bibles, so you can look up. It's the first book of the New Testament, from Matthew 7, 15 to 23. And I'm going to ask you to stand as I read God's word. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. And are grapes gathered and thorn bushes or figs from thistles? No, so every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you would recognize them by the fruit, and the, the them in the air of the false prophets. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of the Father who is in heaven. I want to repeat that. But the one who does the will of the Father who is in heaven. On that day, many would say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, cast out demons in your name, and do mighty works in your name? 
And that, then I would declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, workers of lawlessness. And that lawlessness is the devil. Please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for that you, you have told us what will happen if we don't obey you. Dear Lord, I pray as, as a believer that we do follow what you want us to do. We follow your commandments, dear Lord, and we help other people to come to know you. So help us to, to do your work each and every day, dear Lord, before it's too late. We just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to try an experiment. You can try this this afternoon, or you can try uh, sometime this week. But take a wash rag, just a common wash rag, run cold water through it, wring it out a little bit, next fold it in half and in half again. Now, without unfolding it, run hot water over it on both sides. Now wring it out again. You should feel the cold water coming out because it's still cold on the inside. It re this reminds us, when you know God, you should be warm on the inside, but until you get rid of all the sin and saying no to God, your coldness will come to the surface. So if you get a chance, try that experiment. Um, I know for me, if I, say, wash my face in the evening, hang the rag up, bring it out the next morning, put hot water on it, bring it out, that cold water still comes out of there, even sitting there overnight. So we need to remember, we need to get rid of the sin, we need to stop saying no to God, say yes to God, so that warmness comes out of us. So what's in it for me? That's a phrase we often hear when somebody asks somebody to do something. Somebody might ask you to do something, you, you might say, or you might ask somebody else to do something, and they might say, what's in it for me? It might be a favor, a personal sacrifice, to serve on a ministry team, to assist with meals, visit the homebound, be a greeter, assist with baptisms, etc. And the list goes on. Again, we need you and your, your part. So what's in it for us when we follow his commands and we serve him? We get a reward. Now remember, before I give you these, we do not do good works to be saved. We are saved to do good works. You m might remember that from a message Jim preached in the park a lot a couple years ago. We do not do good works to be saved. We are saved to do good works. So what are some of our rewards when we do the good works and we follow Jesus after we accept him as Lord and Savior? Salvation, forgiveness of sins, we have joy, we have peace, we have help in times of trouble. And remember, the Bible tells us we will have trouble. Just because we believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior, accept him as Lord and Savior, that doesn't mean all our troubles go away. And I personally know that. Um, the, you know, I've been dealing for a couple of years with my sister, Lisa, and you've been praying for her. Please continue to pray for her. Even this week, um, had a lot of phone calls trying to get her moved out of this place that she's in to a better place, closer to here. Um, we all have trouble, and God never promises not to have those troubles. But he's with us during those troubles, and he will guide us through. All we have to do is keep looking at him and accept him and his, have faith in him. Last one, eternal life. What a tragedy for somebody who dies without knowing Jesus because, yes, eternally, they will be in heaven or hell. And we need to do everything in our part to make sure it's heaven and not hell. Many books have been written about knowing God. David Jeremiah wrote, The God you may not know. On the cover, he says, Take the journey from knowing about God to knowing God. In Tony Evans' book of illustrations, he said, A Christian can come to church for years, and only know about God. True knowledge of God requires a two-way conversation. Many Christians, Christians say they want to know God, but don't put in the effort to do so. There are over 31,000 verses in the Bible. There are many verses in the Bible about knowing God. I'm going to list these on the screen for you, just in case you want to jot them down and look at them later. I will go over a few of them, but not all of them. So I'll say them to you and, and write them down if you can. Um, James 4, 7. Romans 12, 2. 1 John 3, 6. 
1 John 4, 6 through 8. Jeremiah 31, 33 and 34. Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24. Jeremiah 29, Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13. John 1, 1. Psalm 103. Philippians 3, 10. 1 John 2, verses 3 and 4. Colossians 1, 9 and 2, 2. Ephesians 3, 19, and John 17, 3. So please, if you get a chance, um, look at some of these today or this week about knowing God. So James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Submit yourselves to God and resist the devil. 1 John 3, 6. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning, sinning has ever seen him or known him. 1 John 4, 6 through 8. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. We love, let us love one another. For love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. Jeremiah 9.24 But let him who boasts, boast in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord who practices steadfast love, justice, righteousness in the earth, for these things I delight, declares the Lord. The Lord delights in these things. Psalm 103, know the Lord that he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his, uh, and we are his, we are his people, and the sheep of his pastor. 1 John 2, 3 and 4, and by this we know that we have come to know him, if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but it does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. John 17, 3. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. You should have recognized some of these verses from 1 John from some of um, Jim's messages the last, um, I guess, about six weeks. We need to repent. We need to re, uh, reverse our direction when we sin. We need to go the other way. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it's time to repent. It's time to repent even before you say yes to Jesus. You need to repent of your sins and then say, Jesus, I love you. Come into my heart. This week in the devotion by great glory, he said, many people today might follow God, but they are more interested in how he can serve them rather than how they can serve him. These people often go to him in crisis, but once the crisis is over, they say, see you next time. So I quote from Greg Laurie, that's because the real blessing of coming to faith is not just being rescued from a crisis. That is one of the fringe benefits, but the real blessing is knowing God and bringing him glory. Yet so many people miss this. They want only what they can get from God, and when they've gotten it, they abandon him. The greatest blessing of all is walking with God and knowing him. David Jeremiah said, spiritual maturity is found in trusting God with all of our problems, just like in faith, remaining optimistic in life, like in hope, and caring more for others than for ourselves, love. Leviticus 26 tells us what he would bless us with if we obey his command. In verse 12, he tells us, And I will walk, walk among you, and you will be your God, and you shall be my people. However, he goes on to warn us what will happen if we don't obey him. I'm going to read a few of these verses in Leviticus chapter 26. If you walk in my statutes and observe my commandments, then I will give you the reins of your season. 
and you shall eat your bread. I will give peace in the land. I will turn to you and make you fruitful and multiply you. I will walk among you and will be your God, and you shall be my people. And then he goes on punishment for disobedience. But if, and there's a lot of buts in this chapter, um, but if you will not listen to me and do all my commandments, I will do this to you. I will visit you with panic, with wasting disease and fever. I will break the pride of your power. Then if you walk contrary to me and will not listen to me, I will continue striking you. And if by this discipline you are not turned to me, but walk contrary to me, then I will also walk, walk contrary to you, and I myself will strike you sevenfold for your sins. I will send pestilence among you, and you shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. But if in spite of this you will not listen to me, but walk contrary to me, I myself will discipline you sevenfold for your sins, and I will lay your cities waste, and will make your sanctuaries desolate. But if they confess, and this is the positive part, if they confess, if the people confess their iniquity and their in, in, well iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers, here's what he would do. If the heart is humble, and they make amends, then I will remember my covenant with Jacob. I remember my covenant with Isaac and my covenant with Abraham, and I re remember the land. So God tells us ahead of time what will happen when we don't obey. He also tells us the good part, what will happen when we do obey. Through all these verses, he warns us several times and says, if we do not listen to him, his punishment will continue to escalate. Several times, he says, if we walk contrary to him, he will escalate his punishments. And as I said, there are many buts in these verses. Remember, if you see the word but, you need to look at the prior verses to see what the but is all about. The last but in these verses says, but if they confess, I will remember my covenant with them. So God is patient with us, and he's always ready to forgive us. All we have to do is ask. So how do we go from saying no and no to God to really knowing God? First, we need to pray. We are told to pray continuously and to pray first. Don't try to handle your troubles and then as a last resort, say, oh, well, I guess I better pray about it. The prayer should be first. Pray when you see trouble and pray before you try to handle that trouble. I've told some people that I pray before my hit, feet hit the floor in the morning. I purposely do that because once I get up, I will be distracted by something else. So pray for God's direction for yourself at the very beginning of each day. And I can promise you, you have a better day. Next, we need to study. We need to read God's word daily, not just when we come together to worship. If you have not read the Bible from cover to cover, January 1st is coming up, and that'd be a great time to start. But don't just read it, pray about it, study it, ask God to reveal the truth from the verses you read in the passages. On October 1st, I started reading through the Bible again. This time I'm reading a one-year chronological study Bible. It's broken down into short sections, and they ask questions at the end of each section. This particular Bible has the book of Job immediately following Genesis 50. Some theologians believe that is correct. Some think maybe not, but that's how they have it in this Bible. But it's interesting when you see the, um, the, the order that it goes in, and it just seems to make sense many times. So we need to pray. We need to study. We need to go to Sunday school. We need to... Um, meet as a body. We need to worship together. That's number three. And you can't do it alone. You need to gather and worship and study with other Christians. We meet together on Sunday, and you need to be here. We also meet on Wednesdays. Um, there are classes out there you can take. You have your fam family Bible study class, Sunday school classes, and other classes that we offer here at Oak Grove. 
many different topics. You need to get involved in some of them and study God's word together as a, a body of believers, but also individually at your home. So we need to pray, we need to study, we need to worship, and we need to serve. As our race said, all believers have been given a gift of gifts from God. If you do not know what your gift is, I suggest you take one of the gift surveys that are available and see where you might fit in. And the gifts might change um, when you take these different surveys. And of course, the surveys are man-made, so they're done differently. So you might see your gift change from time to time. So if you took a survey years ago, you might want to take another one to see what's changed in your life. Currently, we need help in the children's area, child care, baptism preparation. We need greeters. We need ushers, people for the sound, the Adam ministry, the reboot ministry, kitchen help for meals, transportation for our homebound, finances, benevolence, trustees. These are just some of our needs that we need to um, fill up. So where do you fit in? Again, we need your part. You see this tree behind me? It did not just suddenly appear one day. There were many, many people here, many of you in here this morning, were here putting this tree together and then decorating it. And uh, just as a reminder, a little bit more than a month from now, this tree has to come down. And it doesn't come down by itself either. So help is needed to take care of things like that. So I hope you would go from saying no to saying yes to God. You can do this by really really knowing and obeying him. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you again. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you for shed blood. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for the empty tomb. We thank you that you have promised to be with us every single day, every second of the day and that you would never leave us nor forsake us. And once we accept you as our Lord and Savior, no one can take us out of your hand. But dear Lord, there, there is a, a price for that that we have to pay, and that is service. We need to serve you and what needs to be done in Oak Grove Baptist Church, in Harford County, in Maryland, and throughout the world. So dear Lord, help us to open our hearts to you, help us to serve you, help us to find how we can fit in and what part that you can use in this service. Dear Lord, just thank you for these words. We thank you for your warnings. And we thank you again for your love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Recently, as I said, several of our senior members have been called into heaven. More than once during this past few years, many of them had told me that they were ready to go to heaven. They were looking forward to going to heaven. And they didn't know why at that time God had not called them home yet. But he has now. My only answer to them was because God was not finished with them yet. They still had work to do for him. And he had something in mind for them to do. And many of them, I, I know this for a fact, many of them continued to praise him. They continued to tell other people about him and his goodness and his grace. And if it had not been for them, there might be somebody that knows Jesus today that would not have come to know him. Again, we all have work to do. So if you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can do that right now. You need to pray for forgiveness. Believe what John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him should never perish, but have everlasting life if you made that decision this morning we would love you to share it with us and also there's a yellow card in the pews fill that out we would love to know who you are and any and also in the bulletin there's a tear-off sheet you can fill that out you can leave it at your seat we love to hear your prayer requests we love to pray for you as i said there's many many things going on people in the hospital families that need comforting we need to pray for them. If you'd like to be baptized, please let us know, and we will tell you about that. If you'd like to join this church, please come and tell us and let us know. If you just need prayer, 
and you want somebody to pray with you, special need in your life today, please let us know. Come and pray as we, as we go to the next song. Please come and stand and um, worship with us. <laughs>